Sydney's central business district isn't exactly short of tall buildings or iconic landmarks, but nestled among them is a very small reminder of the city's colonial past. Today I'm in Sydney, more specifically the historic suburb of The Rocks, and opposite the overseas passenger terminal where huge cruise liners dock, you'll find this tiny house. It's called Cadman's Cottage, and annoyingly for a grammar pedant such as myself, that's Cadman's without an apostrophe. Cadman's Cottage is one of the oldest surviving buildings in Australia, built in 1816. I know in many other countries that isn't really that old, but this is a country that only got round to legalising same-sex marriage in 2017 and started its own NCIS spin-off in 2023. But in this sandstone cottage's more than 200 years of existence, it's had a few uses. It was originally built for the Superintendent of Government Boats back when New South Wales was a penal colony. I know, hilarious. As you would expect, it was his job to look after the government's boats and the labourers' crews and coxswains. I know, also hilarious. At that time, Cadman's Cottage was right on the shoreline here on the western side of Sydney Cove, just a few hundred metres away from where it's believed the British flag was planted when the area was colonised. Cadman's Cottage gets its name from John Cadman. He ran a pub in England, but clearly that wasn't going too well for him because he ended up being convicted of stealing a horse and was then shipped down under. For several years, he was a convict labourer, but, and let this be a lesson to you kids, committing a crime was probably the best decision he ever made because he was eventually pardoned and appointed superintendent of government boats in 1827. He later got married and lived here with his wife and her two daughters. In 1845, John Cadman retired as the longest serving and last government coxswain. The post was abolished and the cottage was taken over by the water police. Jail cells were installed and the building was used for court proceedings. That was until the 1850s when the water police left Cadman's cottage. In 1864, the Sydney Sailor's Home was built next door. It's still there, and somehow I completely forgot to film it, but it's this building here. However, it ended up taking over the cottage as well. The Sydney Sailor's Home did pretty much what it said on the tin. It provided housing for sailors. Its superintendent lived at Cadman's Cottage with his family until the 1920s when the building was used as overflow accommodation. During this time, it's believed the land in front of Cadman's Cottage was filled in and raised, meaning the building was no longer right on the water, and providing plenty of space for X Factor rejects to peddle their self-released albums. In the 1960s, the overseas passenger terminal was built on the land to cater to cruise ships docking in Sydney. By that point, Cadman's Cottage was empty and falling into disrepair. For 150 years or more, old Cadman's Cottage has weathered time near Sydney's Circular Quay. But in the mid-1970s, it was transferred to the National Parks and Wildlife Service, which began fixing it up. This restoration work wasn't very well documented, so it's hard to know exactly what was changed. This sandstone cottage would linger through the centuries to become a monument to old Sydney town. The NPWS used Cadman's Cottage as a shop for a while, but now it's empty and just a heritage site. Although I did do a ghost tour here when I was a teenager. Apparently, it's haunted, after in 1844 a man was caught here trying to dispose of the body of his boss. We've all been there, right? 
Jean Videl is said to have killed Thomas Warren with an axe and then dismembered his body and tried to burn it in a fireplace. When that didn't work, Videl put Warren's body into a chest and took it down to a jetty next to the cottage. There he tried to hire a boatman to take him out into the harbour to dispose of the chest, but the boatman was suspicious of this heavy piece of furniture that smelled like charred meat. Videl insisted it was full of rotten pork, after all what's more normal than throwing a chest full of decaying ham and bacon into a harbour. The boatman didn't believe this incredibly convincing story and so notified the police, and Videl was eventually hanged. I feel like that's quite a macabre way to end this video, but there's not really anything else to say about Cadman's Cottage. I suppose the one thing to add is that it's sometimes lit up during Sydney's annual Vivid Light Festival, so that's nice, I guess. <laughs>